Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to talk about this topic because it's something that so many of you have asked me and it's how to start a podcast. But today I'm actually gonna tell you how you can start a podcast in less than $100. But I am gonna caveat this because I'm gonna presume you have a computer and I'm gonna presume you have headphones because generally people do. But if you don't, obviously this isn't gonna be in $100 because if you know where to find a laptop under $100, let me know, I have no idea. If you're new on this channel, welcome. If you've been here for a long time, thank you so much for all of your support. I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe and press the like button because it really helps with the algorithm. Okay, let's get into it. Firstly, I'm gonna go through the things you need to start a podcast, and then I'm gonna tell you the price points and exactly how I started mine too. Number one, and this might be obvious, but obviously you need an idea. You need to choose a topic or a theme or something that you're gonna speak about, but you don't necessarily need to have a niche. When I started my podcast, I had no idea what my niche was. If you follow me for a while, you'll know that originally I wanted to base it around my lifestyle as a British Asian and talking about all the problems I had. I realized that was really negative and there were other things I wanted to speak about. And one day when I was going for a run, I thought of a millennial mind. There was loads and loads of content at the time around millennials and I knew that as a millennial myself, I wanted to speak about my own experience. And then one day I just thought of a millennial mind because I think I love illiteracy and so I was trying to find a word that matched with it. So you do need to have an idea. When I started my podcast, I knew that I wanted to talk about controversial things. I knew that I wanted to dive deeper into certain topics. And I also knew that I wanted to speak to experts within their field and I didn't want it to just be me so that was a kind of general theme and idea of my podcast to talk about things that other people weren't really talking about and so even though I didn't really have a specific niche I kind of had an idea of exactly what I wanted to speak about and therefore because the topics were so broad I was able to actually capture different conversations with different kinds of guests and hopefully that still cascades through right now so here I would really think about things that you're really passionate about things that really interest you and then also think about how you can really talk about those things things to create a really engaged audience. For me, I knew that I was going to have really deep, meaningful conversations. And I thought that people would want to hear those. I didn't do any market research. I didn't really ask around. I just kind of did it and I winged it a little bit. And for two and a half years, I kind of really saw no attraction. So don't be alarmed in the beginning stages if you record your podcast and you're not really getting anywhere. It's totally normal. Okay, number two, the one that you're probably going to spend most your money on and the one that you probably think is really complicated and the one that's probably holding you back from starting a podcast is is the equipment. So you're gonna need a microphone, you're gonna need headphones, you're gonna need a computer, and maybe a few lights. When I started my podcast, I had my computer, I didn't use headphones actually, and I really bought a 50 pound mic. It was the blue snowball mic. I think it did the job. And to be honest, up until this whole time, I've been using that mic even when I record podcasts at home. And I think it's quite good. So I think that if you're looking to start a podcast on a really, really, really low budget, the blue snowball mic is really great. I think it's $50, 35 pounds, 40 pounds. At the time I bought it, I think it was 50, but I think now it's gone down in price, so it's even great for that. But it's a really good, simple mic for you to use at home, especially if you're gonna be using Zoom, Riverside, Zencaster, or any of these online platforms to be recording your podcast. Obviously, there are really expensive microphones, like this microphone is quite expensive, the Rode ones are quite expensive, but it really does depend on your budget. So I think if you have a really small budget, go for the Blue Snowball. I did that for a really long time. And then when you can afford to get a better mic, go for one of these, or like me, if you can then kind of transfer into a studio, even better. I also forgot to mention that obviously I'm talking about this if you're going to start a podcast at home. Now, after two and a half years, almost three years this year, actually, I'm in a studio and I've kind of switched in between studios to find which one is right for me. And hopefully one day I'll have my own studio. But you absolutely do not need to invest into a studio when you're starting out your podcast because you really need to understand your audience. You really need to understand if you like it. It's a full time job and it takes so much commitment and so much of your time and so much preparation. And so I would suggest if you're starting out really to just figure it out at home where you can do it really low cost, figure out if you want to do this and then invest into a studio a little bit later on obviously if you have unlimited finances and unlimited money and you also have the budget for it you should go into a studio because it is so much fun you have amazing equipment there's lighting there's cameras there's this these mics which are obviously incredible but for the average person i think if you're looking to start a podcast for under 100 dollars, and this is why you've clicked this video i would suggest starting off at home getting a little mic getting a few lights if you can and then going for it i didn't actually get any lights when i started because 
I was stupid and didn't really think about consistency and all of these different things. But also because I really used to just record at home when I was in between work. And so I didn't really have time to set up lights. I used to use my dad's study. I didn't have my own kind of recording space. So if you do have the privilege of having your own recording space, then I would get lights because then you can be really consistent with your lighting and your background every time, which I wasn't in the beginning. And this is my point. You do not have to be perfect when you start. I know a lot of you watching this video are probably hesitant to start your podcast because you're nervous, you're scared, you're worried about what other people will think, you're worried if it will be good enough. But I literally just started it on a whim and kind of evolved as I grew and I'm still evolving and growing now. Everything you do for the first time is going to be really difficult and really challenging and really tough. But as you get into it, you will get better, you will see improvements and you'll want to make improvements. So you'll want to always be looking at new things you can try. Number three, audio editing software. So in the beginning, I was using Audacity to edit my podcast that was a mindful in itself on how to use it. I was also using GarageBand and I was also using iMovie as well. So if you're just doing audio, I'd recommend using Audacity. But if you kind of know how to use iMovie, then I would move on to that. Now I have an editor, but before I did, I was using Final Cut Pro to edit my podcast, but that's because they were video. And so when I was just doing audio podcasts, I was simply using Audacity and there are tons and tons of videos online on how to use it. This is the great thing about YouTube. I feel like you can learn absolutely everything and it's really easy to use once you get the hang of it. It will take time again, but you can really quickly learn how to use it and you can really simply edit an audio podcast in any of those platforms. The good thing about Audacity is that it's totally free and so there is literally no cost in using it. And if you already have a MacBook, then iMovie is also free. Final Cut Pro you have to pay for and that is quite high budget. But like I said, when you're starting out, Audacity or iMovie is really great to use and they are totally free. So it's a winner. Like I said, I didn't really use any lighting at the start, but I've just seen this viral TikTok camera that everyone is getting. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it off TikTok. The prices range between £4 and £30, but it's a really good way to just make sure you've got good light in all of your videos. And I would always recommend using good natural light as well. So if you can stand in front of a window, if you can sit in front of a window, I mean, then definitely try and do that too. Okay, number four, you need a hosting platform. Now, when I started, I actually used Libsyn, which can range from $5 a month month to $150 a month. But now I use Anchor and I wish, I wish, I wish I used Anchor from the beginning. Anchor is totally free. And what it does is when you upload it onto Anchor, it distributes it across all the different platforms. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, there's loads of other random podcast channels in there as well if you wanna do that too. But it literally distributes everything to all of these channels all at the same time. And it is wonderful. It is the best platform ever. I used Libsyn in the beginning for my first year and a half. And then I moved over to Anchor because they now partner with Spotify and you can upload video on their platform. And so if you're doing a video podcast, you can actually upload your video podcast on onto Anchor, which is amazing, and it uploads it onto Spotify for you. And I just find Anchor much easier to use, and I really, really, really love it. So I would recommend that you go with Anchor, again, totally free, no cost, while lives in you obviously have to pay for. Number five, cover art. Now I have a confession to tell you about my cover art, because I know people spend so much time doing this stuff, and they also pay other people, and you can use Fiverr or Upwork or any of these platforms to pay someone to do your cover art, but I didn't really know any of this when I started. I had no idea. And so I went onto Canva on the free version, took a picture of myself from a modeling shoot, and actually just put a millennial mind and played around with the logo for about five minutes. And there we go. That's how you'll see a millennial mind logo. It was really, really random. I didn't really put much thought into it, but I kind of liked it and I still kind of like it now. But now I am working with someone who is helping me redesign my logo and actually create a logo. Because if you look, I don't really have one. It just says a millennial mind. So I would recommend using a platform like Fiverr where you can connect to loads of different freelancers get them to make your cover art for you for really cheap because they have freelancers all around the world. And there you've got like a really expert person that's doing it for you rather than just doing it so randomly like me. However, if you've got a small budget, you can do what I did and just go onto Canva and play around with the logo and make one yourself. The cover art I would say is actually quite important because it's distributed across all of the platforms. And if you go onto Google Podcasts, if you go onto Apple Podcasts, if you go on Spotify, you'll see that the cover art is always there. And I think it's generally always there when you upload your podcast. So I 
would make sure that it's really something that you love and that's why I'm changing mine now because I'm like, don't necessarily love my Canva little thing that I did ages ago. But like I said, I started off by just doing this stuff and I don't think it all needs to be perfect. I know I've said that multiple times, but I really, really believe that in the beginning, the number one thing that holds us back is this idea of perfectionism and having everything to be so amazing and so wonderful. And it really doesn't need to be. You know, I grew my podcast. and I'm going to do a whole nother video on that just by starting and doing all of these things. And if all these amazing ideas and perfectionism is holding you back, do not let it just begin. That is my number one piece of advice for starting a podcast. Okay. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna tell you that you need to start a podcast is a list of ideas and a list of topics. Now, the mistake I made when I started this podcast is I had loads of random ideas, but I didn't actually break it down into understanding what I was gonna speak about, who I was gonna speak about, and exactly do all the research behind it. So you do need to make sure that you're doing this because if, like me, you start your podcast and you just kind of record two episodes and then you wing it, it's not gonna go that great. What happened to me is I was researching a podcast, trying to find a guest, recording it, and then releasing it all in the same week and trying to do all the kind of cover art for all the different guests in that same week. And it just turned out to be an absolute nightmare because all the editing was very new to me. I didn't know what I was doing and I burnt out. And this is why I did seasons in the beginning instead of just having like a continuous show every single week. So that part is also free because it's just taking up some of your time. But again, if you wanna find a researcher, you can pay for that. So let's recap. Number one, your idea is free, just think about it. Number two, in terms of your equipment, this is the mic that I used. It's 55 pounds on Amazon at the moment, so you can click the link below. Like I said, I'm gonna presume that you have headphones and a computer. If you wanna use headphones, I didn't actually use headphones, but obviously you will need a computer. For lights, I'm gonna link this option, which is 24.99 or 31.44 for this other option as well. But like I said, there is a range of lights out there, so you can really, really pick which one you wanna go with. Your hosting platform, I'd recommend you go with Anchor, which is totally totally free but of course you can go with Lipsyn as well which I said ranges from five dollars a month to 150. Number five is your cover art and I'd recommend that you do this yourself or that you get a freelancer on Fiverr because they range between five dollars and I think they can go up to like a thousand or five hundred I'm not really sure but there's such a big range out there so you can definitely choose and then your last one is your content which again is totally free because it comes from you. I hope that this video has been really helpful in helping you to create a podcast for under a hundred dollars. If you're worried about starting trust me I have been there but I wish I wish I wish I started sooner so if you like this video please 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 give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed I'd be so grateful if you can do that today I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon in the next one